Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Let xn be a sequence of real numbers. Then, xn is convergent if and only if xn is Cauchy. Now, let's first remind ourselves what it means for xn to be convergent and what it means for xn to be Cauchy. To say that xn is convergent, well, let's say that xn converges to x. By definition of convergence, this means the following. It means for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a positive integer capital N, such that for all n greater than or equal to capital N, the absolute value of xn minus x is less than epsilon. And to say that xn is Cauchy means the following. It means for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a positive integer h, such that for all n and m greater than or equal to h, the absolute value of xn minus xm is less than epsilon. Now really, we want to prove xn is convergent if and only if xn is Cauchy. So to do that, we're first going to prove if xn is convergent, then xn is Cauchy, and then we're going to prove if xn is Cauchy, then xn is convergent. So let's start out with the forward implication. We want to prove if xn is convergent, then xn is Cauchy. So let's suppose that xn is convergent. This means that xn converges to some value, and I'm going to call that value x. The whole goal is to prove that xn is Cauchy, which means we want to prove that this second statement is true. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every epsilon greater than zero, let's give ourselves an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. From here, we want to find a positive integer h such that this is true. Now, since we know that the limit of our sequence is equal to x, well, by what we have written up here, this means we know that this first statement is true. And this statement works for every positive real number. So in particular, it must work for the positive real number epsilon over 2. So taking epsilon to be epsilon over 2, we have that this statement is true. So there exists a positive integer of capital N, such that for all n greater than or equal to capital N, the absolute value of xn minus x is less than epsilon over 2. Remember, we want to find a positive integer h such that this is true. Well, the claim is that if we take h to be capital N, then this will be true. So let's take h to be capital N. And from here, we want to show that this statement is true. And since we're trying to prove a state about every two integers, n and m, greater than or equal to capital N, Let's give ourselves two arbitrary integers greater than or equal to capital N. I'll call them N and N. And now we want to show that this inequality is true. So we'll start out by writing the left-hand side of this inequality. And so what we're going to do is we are going to add and subtract x. And now from here, we can apply the triangle inequality, which tells us that the absolute value of this entire thing is less than or equal to the absolute value of xn minus x plus the absolute value of x minus xn. And, of course, the absolute value of x minus xn is equal to the absolute value of xn minus x. And now, the point is that both of these guys are less than epsilon over 2. The reason why is because we know that this statement is true, right? This inequality holds for every integer n greater than or equal to capital N. Well, since n and m are both greater than or equal to capital N, well, if we take n to be n, we have that this guy is less than epsilon over 2. Also, if we take n to be n, we have that this guy is less than epsilon over 2. So yeah, both these guys are less than epsilon over 2, which means 
the sum of both of them is less than epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2. And that's pretty much the reason why we took epsilon to be epsilon over 2 in the state. Right? And we know that when we add these two guys together, we get epsilon. And so we have shown that the absolute value xn minus xm is less than epsilon, which is exactly what we wanted to show. And so we have proven this statement, which proves that xn is a Cauchy sequence. So at this point, we have proven if xn is convergent, then xn is Cauchy. Now we're going to prove if xn is Cauchy, then xn is convergent. So we're trying to prove if xn is Cauchy, then xn is convergent. So let's suppose that xn is Cauchy. Now, in this direction of the proof, we are going to use two preliminary results. The first preliminary result is that every Cauchy sequence is bounded. The second preliminary result is that every bounded sequence has a convergent subsequence. So first of all, since Xn is a Cauchy sequence, we know that Xn is bounded by our first preliminary result. But then, since Xn is bounded, we can apply our second preliminary result to say that Xn has a convergent subsequence. And this second preliminary result is often referred to as the bolzano weierstrass theorem. So that's how I'm going to reference it. And so I'm going to call the convergent subsequence XNK. Now, let's remind ourselves how subsequences work. Basically, we have a strictly increasing sequence of positive integers. N1 is less than N2, and so on and so forth. Less than NK, and so on and so forth. This is a strictly increasing sequence of positive integers. And since they're all positive integers, certainly, xn1, xn2, dot dot dot, xnk, dot dot dot, all make sense, right? So that's really what this subsequence is. It's the sequence which goes xn1, xn2, xn3, and so on and so forth. Now, a property of strictly increasing sequences of positive integers like this is that n sub k is greater than or equal to k for every positive integer k. So we're going to use this fact in our proof. So now, since x and k is a convergent subsequence, we're going to say that it converges to the value x. Now remember, the whole goal has been shown if xn is Cauchy, then xn is convergent. Right? We've supposed xn is Cauchy, and now we want to show xn is convergent. Well, the claim is that xn converges to x as well. And this claim makes sense, because if you recall, a property of subsequences tells us if xn converges to x, then every subsequence of xn also converges to x. So yeah, if xn converges to another value, then that would imply xnk doesn't converge to x, which that's clearly not the case. So this claim makes sense. And so to prove this, well, let's go back to the definition of convergence of a sequence. As we wrote down earlier, this just means this. Similarly, to say that xnk converges to x means the following. Means this. And then let's again remind ourselves what it means for xn to be Cauchy. It means this. So now, to prove xn converges to x, what that means is we want to prove that this first statement is true. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every epsilon greater than zero, let's give ourselves an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. From here, we want to 
find a positive integer capital N such that this statement is true. Now, we know that the subsequence x and k converge to x. And that means we know that this second statement is true. And this second statement works for every positive real number. So in particular, it must work for the positive real number epsilon over 2. So if we take epsilon to be epsilon over 2, this means we have that this statement is true. So there exists a positive integer p such that for all k greater than or equal to p, the absolute value of x and k minus x is less than epsilon over 2. We also know that xn is Cauchy, which means we know that this third statement is true. And since this third statement works for every positive real number, then in particular, it must work for the positive real number epsilon over 2. So taking epsilon to be epsilon over 2, we have that this statement is true. So there exists a positive integer h such that for all n and m greater than or equal to h, the absolute value of xn minus xm is less than epsilon over 2. Now remember, the whole goal has been to find a positive integer capital N such that this statement is true. And the claim is that if we take capital N to be the maximum of p and h, well then that choice of capital N will work. So taking capital N to be the maximum of p and h, we proceed to show for all n greater than or equal to capital N, the absolute value of xn minus x is less than epsilon. So since we're trying to prove a statement about all n greater than or equal to capital N, let's give ourselves an arbitrary n greater than or equal to capital N. And now we want to show that absolute value of xn minus x is less than epsilon. And to do that, well, let's start out by writing the left-hand side. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add and subtract xn sub capital N. So just like that. And by the triangle inequality, the absolute value of this entire thing is less than or equal to the absolute value of this guy plus the absolute value of this guy. Now the point is that these two guys are less than epsilon over 2. And we can show that because it just comes from our choice of p and h. Right? Remember, since capital N is the maximum of p and h, we know that capital N is greater than or equal to p and greater than or equal to h. First of all, to see why this guy is less than epsilon over 2, well, since capital N is greater than or equal to p, and this statement works for every integer greater than or equal to p, then in particular it must work for capital N. So taking k to be capital N, we have that absolute value of x n sub capital N minus x is less than epsilon over 2. So this guy is less than epsilon over 2. So then why is this guy less than epsilon over 2? Well, that comes from our choice of h. Right? We know that this statement works for every two integers, n and m, greater than or equal to h. So in particular, we should be able to take n to be the n we introduced here, and we'll take m to be n sub capital N. And are these valid choices? Well, we should check to see if n and n sub capital N are greater than or equal to h. Well, since n is greater than or equal to capital N, we have n is greater than or equal to capital N, which is greater than or equal to h. So n is greater than or equal to h. Also, n sub capital N is greater than or equal to h, because based on the result we have here, n sub capital N is greater than or equal to capital N, which we know is greater than or equal to h. So both of these guys are greater than or equal to h which means there are valid choices we can make here. And therefore, x of n minus x of n sub capital N 
the absolute value of that is less than epsilon over two. So this guy is less than epsilon over two. So since both of these guys are less than epsilon over two, their sum must be less than epsilon over two plus epsilon over two. And that's just equal to epsilon. And so that shows that this inequality is true. So we have proven this statement, which proves xn converges to x, and therefore xn is convergent. So we have proven if xn is Cauchy, then xn is convergent. So we have proven both directions of the if and only if. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.